Let's start with number 10. Number 10 is Hudson versus Michigan. How many of you are familiar? This is the new majority. It's the first real case out of the Supreme Court where the Roberts new court with Alito uh, have spoken up. And it deals with knock and announce. Remember that was what we always thought. There was a statute that said they had to knock and announce before they, you know, <laughs> placed, you know. I, I thought it wasn't a big deal. Well, Justice Thomas, of all people, in a unanimous Supreme Court case in 95, held that the knock and announce requirement <coughs> was inextricably intertwined within the Fourth Amendment's reasonableness requirement. That it was a constitutional mandate, not just a statutory one. Uh, then some seven years later, the Supreme Court held they could not wait 15 seconds and fucking blow your door down. Uh, not a lot of time, uh, but some, some, some. Then came Hudson and our new majority. Uh, this is from June of last year, about a year ago. Two years ago, excuse me. In, in particular, it's one of Scalia's classic opinions. He's joined by the Chief Justice Thomas and Alito. Concurring? Kennedy. This is the new concurrence. Uh, remember, it was Senator Day O'Connor before. Kennedy was in the right wing branch. Just take the whole picture and move it over a little bit to the right, and now Kennedy is our swing vote. Uh, we've gone a substantial distance to the right, folks. Uh, dissenting, the obvious uh, group of four. Breyer, Stevens, Ginsburg, and nice Mr. Souter, uh, who you know lived with his mom there in New England. <laughs> <laughs> Hudson versus Michigan was, was interesting because it dealt with the knock and announce requirement that Thomas had told us with the unanimous court was part and parcel of the reasonable requirement of the Fourth Amendment to our Constitution. And they said, despite the, 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 despite the fact that the officers admittedly violated the knock and announce requirement of the Fourth Amendment, and despite the fact that that was the but-for cause of finding the evidence, the Supreme Court said the exclusionary rule didn't apply. Why? Because, they said, we look to the purpose that is fostered by that particular constitutional guarantee. And knock and announce is designed to protect the safety of the officers and, the, and, and those inside, and is not part of the privacy concerns of our founding fathers. And Scalia goes on to talk about, he says, we've never held that evidence is fruit of the poisonous tree simply because it would not have come to light but for the illegal acts of the police. <laughs> oh, bullshit. <laughs> I mean, you know, 40 years I've been practicing on that basis. You know, where did this come from? Uh, and then what he, what he explains it to us, he says, suppression of evidence has always been our last resort, not our first impulse. Well, not, not, not maybe his. <laughs> the exclusionary rule generates substantial social cost. Well, that is true. You know, if there's nothing, they don't find any shit, there's nothing to exclude. So the exclusionary rule only benefits, quote, the bad people, us, which sometimes includes setting the guilty free and the dangerous at large. You know, dangerous. They're different. They're foreign. You know, they're not us. We have repeatedly emphasized that the rules costly toll upon the truth-seeking and law enforcement objective, objectives presents a high obstacle for those urging its application. What happened to the old Scalia? Remember his opinion? First one out of the box. The police officers go into this tenement in, in, in Phoenix. The, somebody, there's a bullet hole in the ceiling. They, under the safety exception of the warrant requirement, they bust into the apartment above looking for a weapon or an assailant to protect the occupants. Remember? And they abandon their safety pur purpose for a moment and, and because they see a lot of expensive stereos. This guy obviously couldn't afford that kind of shit. So they lift the stereo three inches, read the serial number, call it in, and their suspicions were confirmed. Stolen stereo. And Smith says, that was a search. That, that there was nothing immediately apparent about the illegality of that stereo. You had to do something to it. Lift it at three inches. And what, about, what happened to this, Scalia? There is nothing new in the realization that the Constitution sometimes insulates the criminality of a few in order to protect the privacy of us all. I like that, Scalia. That's the Scalia I like. Next comes the Plain Field case, the, the Dickinson case, written by Kennedy. Uh, in that case, they, they're, they're doing a teary pat-down, and they feel a small object, they manipulate it between the index finger and thumb, and they, and they feel something, and the officer says, ha, huh, crack cocaine. All right? And the court says, ah, like lifting the stereo three inches, it was not immediately apparent that was evidence, 
manipulating it between your index finger and thumb, like lifting a stereo three inches, constituted a surge. Scalia says, look, if I had been on the court when y'all decided fucking Terry versus Ohio, I would have never gone along with it. Our founding fathers would have never allowed the police to lay hands on them on mere suspicion. I like that Scalia. That's the one I like. That's the one I like. But what about Scalia's idea that, what if, how the fuck does he know what the original intent of our founding fathers was? What does he come off telling us what it was? I mean, think about this. You know, uh, all men are created equal. They meant that. They were not gender perfect. Women didn't get the right to vote or sit on juries until 50 years after African Americans did. Jefferson, who allegedly pinned those words, had slaves, like one or two of them, apparently. Uh, the, the, if you think about it, liberty can't be the exclusive domain of the privileged few. Freedom can't be exclusively for, 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 for the majority, excluding the African American, the people of color, the Hispanics, the Catholics, the Jews. Or it's not freedom you get. This is Scalia, by the way, speaking to the Federalist Society in Philadelphia. He says, people who believe the Constitution would break if it did not change with society are idiots. <laughs> well, I'm an idiot. You know, uh, I, I, don't, I, I, I don't think it's just men. I do think our Constitution has broadened its view, its concept of who is created equal. I think our concept of our constitutional rights has to expand. And by the way, so does Scalia when it serves his interest. Remember uh, Crawford, the, the, the cross-examination confrontation case? Remember it, it had to be testimony and we're all saying, what, what the fuck is testimony? We leave that for another day. Well, another day came in David first Washington and he talks about the fact that we no longer have Marion magistrates, but we got cops. And he uses this language. He says, you know, restricting the confrontation clause to the precise forms against which it was originally directed is a recipe for its extinction. Fucking, that's a living, breathing constitution. He understands it when it serves his interest. 